ended up tanky, tanking. Hello, this is Sarah Soiled Plant and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the Lavoite humidifier. This is the one that so many different plant tubers have. I bought it because I saw other plant tubers with it. And I want to tell you why at this point I'm not going to be buying anymore and I'm only going to be keeping one of my Lavoites and throwing the other ones away. If you're curious why I no longer recommend the Lavoite humidifier, don't forget to subscribe, like this video, write a comment down below, and let's get into it. For those unfamiliar, the Lavoit is a humidifier. Um, it can do warm or cold mist. It can also be auto-programmed. So if you want your room to be 60% humidity, you can set it to 60%. And then when the humidity drops below 55%, it'll kick back on until it hits 60% and then automatically turn off. When I was buying these units about two years ago, that was a feature that you don't find very often. And back then the units were about, you know, $60, $70. Now I think they're closer to the $80 or $90 mark, depending on what's going on with Amazon, of course. But it's definitely gone up in price just because the demand has gone up and I feel like they're trying to capitalize on all the goodwill they've garnered. So fair enough, that makes a lot of sense. Since these have come on the market that have been other competitors where they have that automatic humidity reading auto shut off type situation, they have those, they have bigger tanks. Because I know one thing I was looking at with this one was the larger tank size really comes in handy, especially for doing large rooms like my dining room or living room. And as far as features and quantity and footprint and look, I love these. Um, the only reason I'm no longer recommending them is because of the experience I've had with my individual units. And I will step through the sort of history with you. I have my notes here because I want to make sure I get all the dates right and everything. But I bought my first one on June 11th, 2019. That was when I first started getting into plants and I really wanted to get calatheas and I thought a humidifier would help with that a lot. Um, I moved here, which was cross state lines, all that stuff, new place, um, November 2019. When I moved, I had all of my plants in the spare bedroom and I basically had them all over the place, on tables, on the floor, and I had the humidifier just in the center of the room just so that they could acclimate because I moved not only in winter, but it's a move. So it's stressful for the plant and I wanted to kind of give it a little rehab center while I was situating the house. So I had them in there for a couple weeks. On November 28th, I went into the room to check on the plants and the humidifier was actually running on full blast. It was pumping out mist into the air and the humidity was upwards of 80% to the point where even the windows were getting condensation on the windows and the walls were wet. This, you know, freaked me out, of course. I unplugged it. The unit itself, it has a little reading on here when it says, you know, what the humidity is and the humidity was nowhere close to 80%. So it wasn't like the stop function failed it was not sensing the humidity in the room properly. I actually took video of this and I sent it immediately to their customer support care team. And at the same time, just to make sure my plants weren't going to suffer any more issues. And this was the only humidifier I had at the time. So I decided to just order another one off of Amazon just to make sure, you know, the plants were okay. And I figured even if if I could fix the other one, whatever, like I would have two and I could have used two anyway. So I was like, let me just order another one immediately while I'm getting this one sorted out. While I was waiting for the new unit from Amazon to come in, I was talking to their customer support. They were very helpful, very responsive. They had me try a few things to reset the humidifier to see if that's the reason that it was failing and none of them worked. So they offered to send me a new one for free. And I really appreciate this. You know, they certainly, I mean, some companies aren't willing to do things like that and they were willing to back their product. So I was even more willing to sort of hype up these humidifiers because the customer service was so good. They offered to send me a new unit and that was December 3rd. They said it would take a few days to process and then they would send it out. So basically from the delivery of my humidifier that I reordered and the humidifier that the company sent me, that was only about a one to two week gap. So I'm not sure if both of the units I got that were replacements 
were from like the same batch or the same manufacturing time period, same issue, I'm not sure, um, but they both had very similar failures. That original machine that was failing for humidity reasons, I actually used the tank as a supplemental tank and I would fill that one up while these ones were running so that by the time this one was empty, I would be able to re reload the next one which was actually came in handy. As far as the base of the humidifier, it's in my basement. I kept it mainly thinking, oh, if I need a spare part, something like that, I don't know. I don't know why I think I can MacGyver things like that, but either way, I thought I could MacGyver something with it. And so I decided to keep it and it's still in my basement right now. Once I had the two units in house, I had one sitting here on my Calathea table and another one in my living room on my plant shelf that I've shown in several videos. It's usually the one sitting behind me when I'm sitting on the couch in those videos. So I had them on either ends of kind of my open concept living room, dining room area. For over a year after that, the everything was running really smoothly. So they both came in around like, you know, December 2019 and up until recently, I had no issues with them. They ran well. I would clean them occasionally, probably not as much as the manufacturer says. I'd clean it at least like once a quarter, sometimes once a month, depending if it's running a lot. But overall, for that time period, I thought they were great machines. You know, I didn't use the warm mist function, so that always seemed a little superfluous. You know, like I don't need that because I'm not using it. But aside from that, I thought they were good machines, maybe a little overpriced, but they were good machines. On May 17th, 2021, so a few weeks ago, basically, I had one of my units leak everywhere. I noticed it because I was going over to film my cleaning my shelves video that's up here on YouTube. But I mentioned in that video, you know, oh my gosh, my humidifier just leaked all over the floor. And when I say leaked, I mean like this entire tank just basically whatever was left in here just emptied onto the floor. So clearly something was wrong with the connection points where it wasn't sealing properly and it just leaked all over the floor. Luckily for that section of my house, it's a glass and metal shelving unit and then wood flooring underneath. So it was very easy to clean. Nothing had any long-term damage, anything like that. After I took this unit sort of out of commission, I did thoroughly clean it and sort of inspect it here and there. I didn't see anything glaringly wrong. Even the parts that were dirty weren't like being stuck open or anything like that. It all seemed like it should work, even though it wasn't like sparkling clean. I ended up doing a trial run in my sink just to make sure, you know, I could use it again and it seemed to work okay. So I will eventually use this unit again with a caveat, but we'll get to that later. Then a few days ago on June 20th, I had the humidifier that was on my Calathea table leak in the exact same way. This one I actually caught mid leak. So the tank had about half of water filled up. You know, it was about a quarter of the way down. So I managed to take it off of the table before it had a chance to spill water everywhere. And even though I did that, there was still quite a bit of damage to my table. I'll show you a clip of the video I took after I cleaned up as much of the water as I could. Guess what happened to me today? My humidifier leaked everywhere, everywhere. And it is just a huge mess. Let me show you. Look at the state of this table. The humidifier sat right here and it just leaked and just spread everywhere. It spread over here and down this way. It went all the way over here because I had pots all over this and it would just collect and pool under those pots. And I had to lift it up and like dump it into this bucket and it just was leaking everywhere. And it, oh my gosh. Oh, it was such a huge mess. My poor table. Like this came from a set from my grandma that she has had for, I don't know, it's at least from the 1950s or 60s around there. So it's not like, you know, precious to me or anything. It's not a family heirloom, but it's, you know, it meant a lot to me and I love this table. I love like using it. I use all the storage in it and I have to figure out what I'm going to do with this. Um, the whole thing is made out of a, like a compressed wood 
with a wood veneer on top so you can't really like sand it and refinish it I mean I can try but oh my gosh it's just a huge mess like look at this look at all of this this is all from the water like it's still slightly damp I've let it's been drying for I don't know a couple of hours after I like took all the water off I could but oh my gosh like all of these different water stains from it and some of it where it's like really bad like right here especially you know there's rippling and things like you can't really tell on camera but it, I can feel a texture whereas you know normally it's smooth it's just oh and the light goes up oh it's it makes me so sad when that humidifier failed, I decided to take that one also out of commission, put it into a bucket. So actually right now I have no humidifiers running in my common area space. Luckily for my Calatheas, it's been very rainy the last few weeks and it hasn't been super horribly hot outside. So I just haven't been running AC lately. That's helped keep the humidity around like 50 to 60%, at least for right now. So I've been lucky in that respect for my plants that they still have their nice, awesome humidity without the humidifiers right now. And that leads me to another point that I'm sure some people will think. I thought it too initially as a sort of cause for why this happened. And that is that the unit, when you put it down, it can be mildly askew. Like this is an exaggeration, but it can sort of not seal properly when you put the unit down or the tank down onto the base. But this had been days after I put the humidifier on. I wasn't kidding when I said it's been like rainy and mild out. For basically the entire month of June, it has been off and on very rainy or not super hot outside. So I have not been running the AC like I normally would in the middle of summer. This humidifier has not been working super hard during this time period. Both of these tanks had been on the units for at least two or three days before they started leaking. So if it was something about it being misaligned, it would start leaking right away, but it wasn't leaking the first few days when I put the tank on the unit itself. So it's not that I didn't install it properly. At least that's not a cause, because that's that I can rule out for sure. The other reason I could have been having problems is that I wasn't cleaning it properly, things like that. That's totally possible. I'm not an expert at this. I'm just trying to clean it best I can. There's certain sort of nooks and crevices on the unit itself that are extremely hard to clean to the point where I use a toothbrush and I use different types of like angled things to try and get in all the spaces. And sometimes I miss things like that's totally possible, but I shouldn't have to become like some sort of cleaning expert in order to not have a humidifier leak all over my table. I, maybe my standards are too high, but I think, I think I cleaned it as best I could. I will also disclose that I was using filtered water and not distilled water like every single humidifier company recommends. I am not made of money and I don't have a dis water distillery in my house. So I was using filtered water thinking that that would at least help reduce the amount of buildup on the unit itself. Was there still buildup? Yes. Was I cleaning it? Yes. Frequently enough? Probably not. But I was cleaning it once a month, maybe once a quarter. So am I saying that the Lavoit humidifier is bad? No. Am I saying no one should ever buy this unit? No. Will I buy another Lavoit humidifier? No. What I'm sort of saying with this video is I have used three Lavoit humidifiers and all three of them failed. I just wanna get my personal experience with them out there just in case of other people have had similar situations happen to them. If this is just how humidifiers are and this is just something I need to expect from any humidifier, please let me know in the comments. It's very possible I'm being too hard on these units, you know? Maybe every humidifier kind of fails after about a year and a half, two years because of just buildup in water. If that's the case where every humidifier is gonna fail eventually like that, I would employ the strategy that I'm gonna use with this unit. So this unit I'm gonna keep, I don't need two of them at the moment, especially with moving into a new house, I'm not gonna need two units. 
So I'm gonna get rid of one of them and keep one just because I've already spent the money on it and I did test it out in my sink. It wasn't leaking again, but I am gonna use more precaution. And that leads me to my solution, which is not the best solution in the world, but it's a solution. And that is to use a storage container. So this is a storage container that I bought from Ikea. Super affordable, I think it was like two, three dollars. The lid like doesn't even stay on. Um, it's super cheap, but I was using this for propagations and I don't have any propagations going on right now because I'm about to move. But what I'm gonna do is actually take this, leave the lid off and do one of these. This solution is not uh, refined or fancy or scientific in any way. This is basically an insurance policy is when this thing leaks eventually, again, it's inevitable. When it leaks again, it is going to leak into this container and at least not damage my furniture. One issue I see with doing this is that the humidity reader, the one that sort of senses what humidity it is and will auto adjust the, the mist on it, that will probably be encumbered. It's gonna be blocked by the sides of the container, even if you kind of leave as much space as possible. So one thing I'm going to expect to happen is that the readings are gonna be way off. What I'm basically gonna do about that is I'm gonna set it to my normal temperature, or my normal temperature, my normal humidity, and then I'll have one of these guys you know, nearby and it can do similar readings. And if it's reading really high, I will lower it. If it's reading really low, I will raise it. And that's gonna be just the solution to this problem. I'm gonna have to check it using this as opposed to this machine. And just, that's what I'm gonna do. If you're somebody who also has one of these humidifiers or really any humidifier and you're nervous about this, I would say just get a container to put them in. Like I said, this one from Ikea was very affordable, three bucks, you know, it's a good insurance just to make sure your furniture is not damaged. I will also say that I have taken the Levoit recommendation affiliate link out of my videos. Every single one of my videos had an affiliate link for this humidifier because I used it and it was doing really well and I really liked it. But now that I've had these problems, I am definitely going to be taking them off of my affiliate link. And if I come across an uh, awesome humidifier in the future, maybe I'll add it, but I don't see myself buying a new one until this one fails again. So that is why I no longer recommend the Lavoit humidifier. Is it a hard, like solid, I hate this product? No, this might just be, you know, some sort of anecdotal thing to just add to the masses of voices about these. I wanna see if other people had similar experiences or if this is just a common thing with humidifiers and just something I should have been aware of from the get go. Either way, this is my solution and any new humidifier I bring into my house, I am going to be doing this method just to make sure everything stays where it needs to stay. I wanna make sure all of my surfaces stay dry. Write a comment down below, let me know what you think about all this and I will catch you next time. Bye.